Trump took office, the steady transfer of power from the executive branch over to the Pentagon. The White House says it helps the military move quickly and more efficiently on a tactical level. Critics say the move allows the president to duck responsibility from controversial decisions. So let's talk about it with Lieutenant Colonel Rick Francona. He's CNN military analyst and former U.S. military attache in uh, Syria. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, thank you. So good to see you. Uh, the most recent example I want to point out of this is giving Defense Secretary James Mattis, recently retired four-star general, the power to set troop levels in Afghanistan. Are military members comfortable with that kind of transfer of power? Are you uh, yes, <laughs> actually, I'm not. Uh, I think the president is the ultimate uh, response has the ultimate responsibility for determining troop levels. Now he can take advice from the from the secretary of defense, from the chairman of the joint chiefs, from the battlefield commanders. Uh, that's all well and good, but the ultimate decision rests uh, with him because he's the one that has to explain to the American people why we're sending young Americans into harm's way. So I think uh, at that strategic level, you need to keep that uh, decision making level uh, power with the president. Now, below that, I don't have any problem with the Pentagon just uh, uh, receiving more authority from the president. I think that's been long overdue. So we're, we're talking about two different levels here, strategic and, and tactical. Okay, so the White House says the move empowers the military. It cuts out needless bureaucratic steps. Here's what President Trump, though, said after a raid in Yemen where a Navy SEAL died. This was a mission that was started before I got here. This was something that was, uh, you know, just they wanted to do. Uh, and they came to see me. They explained what they wanted to do, the generals, who are very respected. My generals are the most respected that we've had in many decades, I, would, I believe. Uh, and they lost Ryan. They lost Ryan. Uh, obviously giving generals much credit where credit is due. But do you get the sense that there's an avoidance of responsibility there for the consequences of that decision? Mm, no, I'm going to give the president a pass on this one. Uh, it, it, was, it was due to the office and all that. Uh, but this is the kind of operation that you want uh, decided at the tactical level. Because the commander on the ground, on scene, they have to be able to react fast. I don't think that you need to go up to the president every time you want to launch a special operations raid unless it's into a sensitive area outside uh, of the uh, already established zones of conflict. Now, if you're talking about uh, Yemen, Syria, Iraq, we've got ongoing operations there. So you have to give the battlefield commander, the, the man on the ground, uh, the decision-making authority to, to conduct operations quickly. When targets present themselves, you have to react quickly. You have to get inside the decision-making cycle of the enemy. If you're outside of that, the targets disappear and, and you lose the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in one instance, I think the president needs to have the, uh, retain the uh, authority for strategic. But at these tactical levels, I have no problem with it being pushed down as low as possible. All right, good to know. Lieutenant Rick, uh, Colonel Rick Fran Francona, always appreciate your insights, sir. Thank you for being here.